This is departures for Thomas Cook in Manchester Airport. There are no staff, no passengers and no flights. Because the oldest travel company in the country is no longer in business. But it has up to 150,000 customers abroad. The largest piece of repatriation is now underway to bring them back. This is the view from Mallorca. No one has phoned us, no one has emailed us. We've had to find out just when we've arrived. Nightmare. Nightmare, stressed. Uh, not what we wanted really before going home. So, but what can you do? Other people have lost their jobs, so we're, we're not as bad as some other people. The men and women in yellow vests like this have been deployed by the government. The taxpayer will again be picking up a bill for another failed company. In the early hours, the man in charge told the world he was sorry. I know that this outcome will be devastating to many people and will cause a lot of anxiety, stress and disruption. First, I want to apologize to my 21,000 colleagues who I know will be heartbroken. Secondly, I would like to say sorry to all our customers. Thomas Cook was a major UK employer. Here in Peterborough alone, over 1,000 jobs have been lost. A week of uncertainty has ended with the worst outcome possible. Here, staff hugged each other and cried together. A lot of tears. People have been there a long time. People have lived their lives through Thomas Cook. You know, they were hardly going to be happy to be told one day that their services were no longer needed. From a personal note, you know, we've got the most amazing guys in this Peterborough office and we've made some, we're a family. Um, we're family, we're friends, and it will remain that from, um, from now until forever, really. All of Thomas Cook's customers abroad have been guaranteed a return flight. But what about those who had planned to start their holiday today? Jerry arrived at Gatwick Airport yesterday. He was worried, but Thomas Cook told him his flight was only being delayed due to staff sickness. The company then put him up at a nearby hotel. And then we were told we would get a bus back from the hotel at midday today, ready for the half five flight tonight. But obviously the buses didn't turn up. We were told they're not going to turn up because they've now ceased trading and no flight. So we've made our own way here and now we're just going to get in our car and go home. Today was meant to be the beginning of Simon and Polly's honeymoon. Absolutely gutted. gutted. Absolutely Devastated. Gutted. Yeah. We found out at three o'clock this morning um, that it was all over and we've just been up in a daze really. Um, just what do we do? What do we do? It's such a shame that a company that has traded for 178 years was allowed to get to this point and go down the pan. Uh, the poor chap will be tom turning in his grave, Mr Thomas Cook. In Glasgow, the first of the company's customers landed since it folded. The plane was awful quiet. People weren't enjoying the flight because of the hassle over in Zanti. There were tickets, they weren't printed right, and they were because of Thomas Cook's went under. It's scary like that I'm dirty today, so it's a big thing for me, and I thought panic attack on the way to the airport. I can't imagine how other people feel. There's loads of kids as well on the flight, and... You just think, how with young kids are you going to worry about getting home? Customers who have had package holidays cancelled should be legally entitled to get their money back. But what appears gone forever is Thomas Cook itself. The immediate question now is just how was one of the world's oldest and well-loved brands allowed to collapse? Well, Thomas Cook's collapse is being blamed on a myriad of issues, including the internet revolution and even Brexit. But the British public is still going on holiday. So why did we stop Thomas cooking it? 178 years ago, Thomas Cook invented the mass market holiday. A pioneer. But today, the company collapsed after failing to move with the times. Its aircraft grounded now they'll be sold off to pay its debts. The British government has in the past stepped in to help stricken firms, most recently British Steel. But the Transport Secretary refused Thomas Cook's plea for a £250 million cash lifeline, saying it wasn't worth it. I don't think that there was a route through to 
pumping in taxpayers' money and then actually avoiding today. I think today would have happened even if we'd done that and spent more taxpayers' money on. The company was a giant, recording annual sales of £9 billion in the last financial year, carrying 19 million customers a year, with 22,000 staff in 16 countries, including 9,000 in the UK. We promise to find you a holiday resort that fits all your requirements. But those gargantuan figures were overshadowed by some eye-watering numbers on the balance sheet. In March, the company recorded a record loss of one and a half billion pounds. That included writing off more than a billion from its ill-fated takeover of package holiday company MyTravel. In August, it announced it had raised 900 million pounds just to keep trading. But this weekend, banks refused its request for an additional 200 million pounds to tide it over the winter. Crippled by debt, it went under. So what went wrong? The company has blamed Brexit uncertainty and the linked fall in sterling for hitting bookings. It also said the 2018 heatwave caused people to stay at home. But its demise was partly self-inflicted. Maintaining 500 shops in an age of online booking wasn't smart. In a, an increasingly online world, I think it was starting to fall behind. And if you think of how future generations of holidaymakers are going to book their holidays, swipe, swipe, move on after eight seconds, I think Thomas Cook had a huge amount of work to adapt for that. And again, the debt was preventing it from making that change that it had to make. The Pension Protection Fund has said staff pensions will be safe, including the tidy sum put by by Chief Executive Peter Fankhauser. He's earned more than £8 million since 2014, including bonuses, and presided over the company's demise. Amid calls for the directors to repay their bonuses, the business secretary has asked the insolvency service to investigate their conduct and whether their actions have damaged the pension schemes.